dear audience, thank you so much for joining us today. Today, on the occasion of International Mother Language Day, I would like to start by conveying my deepest respect to the fearless fighters and martyrs of language movement who fought to uphold the dignity of our mother tongue. I am Tanzia Mubarak, lecturer at the Department of English and coordinator of the Mother Language Fest 2021. Today is the second day of our ongoing Mother Language Fest and this festival is being organized under the Green University Language Center with continuous assistance and support from our dear students of Green University Club for Languages. Today's symposium is titled Dipaboli, an international virtual symposium on language, literature, and culture. To enable more participants to join in this session, the entire event is being live streamed on the official Facebook page of Green University, pages of English Department, Language Center, and Green University Club for Languages. Since we have speakers and guests of various ethno-linguistic background with us today, we will be using English language as the common medium of communication throughout this whole symposium. The theme of our symposium is Deepavali, and the theme is inspired by the prominent Bangladeshi writer Humayun Azad. We hope that, like a festival of lights, today's presentations will come together to lighten up and extend our cultural horizon. On this day, we are very pleased to have among us our honorable chief guest of the event, Professor Dr. Muhammad Gulam Samdani Fakir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Green University of Bangladesh. We also have respected chairperson of the Department of English, Mr. A.K.M. Wazid Kabir Sir, Green University of Bangladesh. And we also have among us Professor Dr. Apurva Shah. He is the coordinator of Center for Endangered Languages also the chairperson of the Department of English in SKB University, India. We also have among us the convener of the Mother Language Fest, Ms. Shriaja Munira, who is the assistant professor at the Department of English and director of Language Center, Green University of Bangladesh. At this point, I would like to request Ms. Shriaja Munira to present her welcome speech. Thank you all. Thank you, Misha. Honorable Chief Guest of today's program, Professor Dr. Mohammad Gulam Samdani Fokir, Vice Chancellor, Green University of Bangladesh. Honorable Special Guest, Chairperson of Department of English of Green University of Bangladesh, Mr. K. M. Wazid Kabir. Respected Special Guest, Dr. Apur Bushaha, Chairperson of Department of English of SKB University. They are international students from different countries and our students of GUB and the faculty members of Green University of Bangladesh. Good evening and assalamu alaikum. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the International Virtual Symposium on Language and Culture organized by Green University Language Center and Language Club. Today, the event has been designed into three segments. In the first segment, we have the presentation on language diversity. In the second part, the topic of the presentation is culture. The, the third segment is about literature. I'd like to inform that Green University Language Center is celebrating Language Fest to observe International Mother Language Day to pay homage to every mother language all over the world. As a part of this initiative, this International Student Symposium has been arranged to share the different diversity of language and culture of different countries. Apart from this event, a number of events are going to be taken place to celebrate this history day. For example, inauguration ceremony of indigenous language and culture unit, literary abda quiz competition, international panel discussion, competition on Bangladesh regional dialect, etc. I'd like to mention that without the participation of the students from China, Nepal, India, and Bangladesh, our program will not be successful. We are really thankful to everyone for your participation. 
the students of Language Club has also played a very important role to organize this event. I owe my heartfelt thanks to our honorable chief guest for making his convenient to attend the program. I once again welcome you all to enjoy today's session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Shiraja Munira, ma'am. First, we would like to start with our presentations. So first segment is the language segment. Here we have two speakers. Our first speaker is Ms. Moshobi Mahanti. She is a third semester student at the Department of English, Sidho Kanho Birsha University, India. And she will be talking about the death of languages. That is, how do languages gradually disappear and go extinct having no native speakers? So, Moshumi Mahanti, the floor is yours. I would like to thank the authorities of the University of Bangladesh for giving me this opportunity. I am also thankful to the Language Center of Green University. I thank my university authorities for allowing me to participate at this symposium. I have no words to thank Professor Dr. Okurbo Shaha, Professor and Coordinator, Center for Endangered Languages, who has given me this chance. Otherwise, it would have been possible. 21st February is the celebrated as the International Mother Tongue Day. Throughout the world and the whole world knows that why it is so important to us. I pay my tribute and respect to those martyrs for the cause of Mother Tongue. We all love our Mother Tongue and nobody wants that his or her Mother Tongue dies. But most unfortunately, many languages die. Okay, so our uh, because of technical and difficulties, I think uh, Moshumi is having some problems. We would like to listen to her uh, at the end of our some other presentations. We are moving on to Shushmita Day. So Shushmita Day is an MA student of the Department of English at SKB University, India, and her specialization is in linguistics and translation studies. Today, she will be talking about the revitalization of endangered languages. So, Shushmita, you can start. Good evening, everybody. Respected honorable guests, dear participant friends from different universities of different countries, my dear friends from my university, from Green University of Bangladesh, and all the esteemed audience who are online. I consider myself fortunate as I have been given a chance to speak a few words at this international symposium on the International Mother Tongue Day. I would like to thank the authorities of Green University of Bangladesh for giving me this opportunity. I am also thankful to the Language Center of the Green University and I am fortunate as Professor Dr. Apur Bushaha, Professor and Coordinator, Center for Endangered Languages, has not only introduced me to linguistics and created my interest in endangered languages, but has also given me this chance. On this International Mother Tongue Day, I pay my deepest tributes to the language martyrs of Bangladesh. Today my topic is Revitalization of Endangered Languages, a study in Korea and Endangered Language. In India, there are 197 languages which have been classified as endangered. Of these, Korea is classified as vulnerable language by the actors. It belongs to the Munda family of the Austroasiatic language. It is spoken by the Shabur Kheria community in the district of Purulia, Bankura, and Middapur in West Bengal, in Gumla and Simtega district of Jharkhand, in Shurguja and Raigarh district of Chhattisgarh, and Sundargarh district of Orisha. It is also spoken in Assam, Tripura, Andaman, and Nicobar Island in India, and also in Nepal. The total number of speakers is 2,76,614. In Purulia, it is spoken by the community in and around Rajnuagar, Buglidi, Borabadar, and Manbazar block. This paper will try to analyze the probable causes of the gradual extinction of the Khariya language. It will also try to focus on how some steps towards revitalization of the language are being undertaken by some members of the community. But now the question is, how to prevent the death of a language and how to revitalize it. Several steps should be taken to protect the language from dying. I quote, elevating the prestige of a language is required to keep a language from being abandoned, unquote. The arts to save the language should come from the speakers themselves. The educated person of the community should try to convince the young generation to speak the language. I quote, an increase in prestige can be achieved in many different ways, including 
the use of the language in media and technology, official government recognition for the language, and increased economic status of its speakers. Mr. Gopi Vallabh Singh Dev, a member of royal family and a teacher by profession, had fought throughout his life for the rights and privileges of the Khadiya Shabur community. On 7 January 1968, he established the Shabur Samiti in the Kura Village, 1983, Khadiya Shabur Kollan Shamsangar. It is odd that Mohasheta Devi also associated with this organization from 1983 till her death. Professor Gaiti Spivak is also associated with this NGO. She is an honorary advisor. She used to fund the running of five schools and the midday meals of the students of those five schools. In the schools, the young generation is encouraged to speak their language. There are regular classes which aim at preserving their mother tongue. At present, under the able leadership of director Mr. Prashant Rokhi, the association has taken a number of steps to preserve and promote the language. Shabur Mela is organized once a year. During the fair, there are programs which include songs and drama in Khariya language. Discussions are held in Khariya language covering the areas like health, sanitation, nutrition, agriculture, even pulse polio. As drinking wine is very common in community, there are regular discussions to make them aware of this ill effect of drinking. Igar's Gitanjali has been translated into Khariya by Prashant Rokhi, Jalodur Shabur, Holanat Shabur, Haru Shabur, and Fotik Kumar Hembrom. It has been edited by Mr. Prashant Rokhi, published by Vishwabharati as Gitor Anjura. Shabur Lokogano Lokokatha is a collection of Shabur folk songs and folk tales. Collected and translated into Bangla by Mr. Prashant Rokhi, edited by Mohasheta Devi and published by Shaikta Academy, New Delhi in 2013. Mr. Prashant Rokhi has also edited a dictionary, Shabur Bhasha Ubhidan. When the whole world is suffering from the pandemic of COVID-19, the association has composed songs on coronavirus in Kharia to make them aware of this disease. These songs are being sent to the mobile phones of the members of the community also, and all these are actually steps to prevent the language from being extinct. On a smaller scale, Mr. Nirbal Shabur, a graduate of the Kharia speaking community, has established a school in Sindhi village of Purulia district and named it Shopni School Bari. He has 25 students in the schools who are taught their endangered mother tongue along with their other subjects. The journey has begun in 2019 and it is expected that Shopni School Bari will also move forward in preserving the language. Radio can play a very important role in revitalizing the language. The speakers will not only have more opportunities to hear their language, but they will be hearing it in a context often associated with higher economy and social standing. The Guatemala Radio Project supports the community radio stations to broadcast program related to health, education, and other issues. Providing government recognition is another significant step to save a language from dying. It not only provides prestige to the language, but also makes the language more valuable in public estimation. Establishing bilingual schools like Shopni School Buddy and other classes for both children and adults is another step. And finally, I quote, linguists who study endangered languages can provide knowledge about what programs have worked for other communities, unquote. Language activists are in a sense pioneers of a new but long-term process, but it is the next generation speaker on whom lies the future of the language revitalization. And our Center for Endangered Languages has taken a small initiative towards this. Thank you so much. So that was from Shishmita Day, SKB University, India. And we had a wonderful view of what we can do to revitalize the endangered languages. And she talked about Korea languages uh, as a focus. So thank you so much, Shushmita Dey. Now we are moving on to our next segment, which is the cultural segment. Here, our first speaker is Kang Wen Long from Wuhan Textile University, China. Thanks, thanks to Ten Tenzia. I am honored to be with you today for the invitation from Green University of Bangladesh. My name is Kang Wen Long. I'm a student from Wuhan Textile University. Hubei Province, China. Today is International Mother Language Day, and also a day to honor the five people who sacrificed their lives years ago. I come from China. It is the most populous nation in the world, and it is known 
that one fifth of the planet speaks Chinese. Mandarin Chinese is the mother lang- mother tongue of our people, and it it takes an an average ten years for a foreigner who want to become a fluent speaker of Mandarin. As China has become the second largest economy in the world, um, I'm glad to find that there are more and more international students and businessmen who want to manage the Mandarin well. Yet. Gaining influence in Mandarin is a difficult practice. All manner of things affect how long it takes. So, so long as you like it, with tremendous practice, I believe everyone could finally manage Chinese well. This year is bound to be an unusual year, and the day is celebrated at a time when the world is going through an unprecedented crisis. Hope everyone could get through the crisis and embrace a happy new year. Thanks. 祝各位新年快乐，牛年大吉。谢谢。Thanks. So I think that was all from Kang. So Kang was basically talking about the cultural importance of learning Mandarin language,、uh, which is、uh, he was talking from China. So that is why we are putting it on the cultural segment rather than the language, because he wanted to talk about the cultural importance of、uh, Mandarin language, and he told us that it takes ten years to learn this language. So that's exa- really excellent.、Yeah. So thank you so much、uh, for、uh, talking a bit with us about your language. And now we are moving on to our next speaker, Austin Rhodes from Shanghai International Studies University, China. So I would like to invite you to start your presentation, please. To say a few words. Ah,、uh, hello everyone. I'm from.、Uh, I'm a Chinese student from Shanghai、uh, International Studies University, and um,、uh, it is very. Um, it, it is quite good to hear Chinese or Mandarin in this kind kind of conversation or in this kind of environment. So,、um, as、um, uh, Mr. Kang Wenlong has said, that we are experiencing a a like globalization trend in this com- in this society in this on on this planet in this world, and we are gonna have.、Um, We're going to spend no efforts to save our mother tongue, our indented languages, our our、um, cultural diversities、um, from different aspects. So I'm talking about it from a very nuanced aspect. That is、um, the cuisine of my country of China.、Uh, that is China's Chinese cuisine, and I believe that the most prominent or dominant thing. Appearance that you could ever thought about of a culture、uh, is about,、um, or how how do how to say that it is、um, about、um, your cuisine, your dishes, because it is the every day like three meals a day. It is an everyday thing, so you have to. So talking, speaking of a a a culture, a kind of group of people, an ethnic group, or a people. Um, it is very important to know about their culture from the cuisine, from the dishes, because every every part of this world have every have have different like、uh, lifestyles of living on this planet.、Um, but after, I mean that after the purified, I'm, I'm sorry, after the 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 spring of the globalization, I believe that we are coming to a converge of this culture, and we are going to have a Very vivid and prosperous environment for for living on this planet for 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 us to know about other cultures. So,、um, if you can look at my PDF, the Bite of China is one of the most famous documentary、uh, documented by Chinese like the director, and it was like owning focusing on the dishes in every part of China. From the north part to the south part, from the west part to the east part, and it was、um, pretty nice to sh- to see such food or such cuisine, such dishes coming live on the screen and telling about,、uh, uttering about your culture、uh, and your story behind the culture. And it was so nice, of, nice of it to to see such、uh, production on this. On the screen. So, if you got, if you are interested in it, you can actually search and you can actually Google about it. And um, so I'm talking about um、uh, the Chinese cuisine. Um, so we have a large theory and many 
uh, nationalities. So we, uh, hence the variety of Chinese food has different but fantastic of mouth-watering flavor. And Chinese food can roughly divide it into uh, four regional cuisine, that is Shandong cuisine, Sichuan cuisine, Cantonese cuisine, and Jiangsu cuisine. And um, uh, because I'm, I'm a um, freshman in, the, in, in my college, in my university, and I was from uh, Guizhou, which was which is the south uh, west part of China, and we are very much like the Sichuan cuisine in in everyday dishes, and we eat it. We take in a lot of spices and a lot of spices, and that's it. And the Shandong province originated in the Qing and Lu areas in spring, autumn, and watering state, which is very long, very very long, like four thousand years ago. And um, for all which formed in Qin and Han dynasties, and after the Song dynasty, Shandong cuisine has become a representative of northern China's cuisine. And we have um, a lot of um, those famous cuisine that has come to the national cuisine, national dishes. When when like um, uh, inviting the very distinguished guests from from other countries, we are delicately picking up every kind of cuisine, every every flavor of cuisine from the four main cuisine in China. And we have all of this, like uh, 12 or 13 or 14 dishes of ev from every like um, styles of the cuisine. And that's it. That's probably the, and, the, and here are the, some pictures from uh, of Shandong cuisine, which is um, like a braised shrimp, braised in tenzai, and sweet and sour ca cabbage. And they don't use like spice that much and which will like uh, have a very pleasant flavor of it. And um, and next we come to Sichuan cuisine, which is my country's cuisine, my hometown's cuisine. And we have a lot of spice. You can see we, ha we have spice flavor and sour and hot flavor. And there are a lot of like ways and methods of cooking. And there are like more than 20 types, including fried, stir frying, boiling and blasting, stew and so on. And we don't, we, we have like the most famous dishes, which is mapo tofu. And I believe uh, a lot of Chinese have uh, experienced or have had a bite of this cuisine, which is like very spicy, but very flavored and yeah. I think most of the people in China who, who can bear spice will love it. And I believe like uh, in, in India and Bangladesh, we have curry. So let me take the, like, the same flavor of uh, spices. You guys might, yeah, also have, you, yes, you guys may also. Do. Yes, we do have yeah. curry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I once, I once was uh, invited to one of my best friend's home and, and he was a Bangladesh. He was from Bangladesh and, and he actually cooked a meal for me. And it was really spicy compared to my, my like the Sichuan cuisine. And um, I believe that you can take a lot of spices as well. So you might like it if you can, if you can take spice. And those are hot pot, Sichuan hot pot, and twice cooked pork, and fish flavored breaded pork with garlic sauces, and mapo tofu, as I mentioned, and kung pao chicken. And those are all, you can see a lot of, a big screen of red, a big hint of red because spices. And uh, for Cantonese cuisine, we don't actually non spices. And it was uh, pretty much focusing on the exquisite cooking techniques and um, meticulous cutting techniques. And we can we can cut a tofu into a flour, which which well, how to say, which is a very elaborate cooking uh, masterpiece from uh, for. Uh, from the cooker. If you if you have a have the opportunity to experience the Cantonese cuisine, you can actually see the masterpiece and the, the effort that put into this. How many they, they have worked so hard just to give a good impression for the guests to as 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 they are presenting as they are uh, presenting a, a culture, not just uh, like cooking the dishes. So Cantonese cuisine is a really um, symbol Chinese exquisite cooking and um, like knifing techniques yeah and you can see the uh, delicately um, how do you say peeled and uh, knifed uh, cucumber and there was crispy suckling pig and illustrate and Jiangsu as for Jiangsu cuisine uh, we are pretty much into soup and we have uh, like uh, it, it, it is 
um, basically like every meal will be like like two hours of preparation because it is a very long, very lengthy to do such methods and it's cooking it's 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 cooking is good at duration pretty much like that and you can see this is Yangzhou fried rice with like pea and uh, ham and eggs in it and there was sweet and flour mandarin fish which was like which was cooked which was stewed uh, with syrup and then put it up into uh, on the onto the the fish and it was very delicious and you can see stewed pork bowl uh stewed pork bowl in brown sauce and which was which is also uh available in in shanghai and it was pretty much like jiangsu and province is pretty much near shanghai city yeah so this is my part for uh as for sharing the <laughs> the like the the cuisine culture the dish culture the the food culture of China, uh, it was just a glimpse of it and it was uh, because of its history. So Chinese people have uh, taken long history, uh, delicately uh, stirring and cooking for this like masterpiece. So if you uh, have, a, have a chance to get into China, I strongly suggest you to take a journey with the food in it. Yes, that's my part. So. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Austin. I think you all are feeling a little bit hungry, right? After this presentation. So thank you so much, Austin, indeed, for indeed. your wonderful presentation. Austin basically started by talking about what kind of a challenge it is at present to preserve cultural tradition in this globalized world. And he also mentioned that our food is very much linked to our cultural identity. And he later moved on so, to some of the like delicate and pieces of art, uh, if I'm uh, if I to say the least, uh, the foods in uh, China. And he is calling it a bite of China. So it was an excellent presentation from Austin. Now it is time to move on to our next speaker, who is Bimal Chitrakar. He is from Jiangnan University in China, and he will talk about the food culture of a uh, Nepalese ethnic community. Uh, Bimal Chitrakar, the floor is yours. Uh, good <laughs> evening, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor and distinguished uh, personnel from Green University of Bangladesh, and all, all the participants from different countries. And it's my pleasure and honor to present my short presentation uh, on the occasion of the International Student Symposium on Language, Ling Literature and Culture. Today I'm going to talk about uh, Newa culture, Newa and ethnic group of Nepal and the foods they use. Especially I'm, I'm going to focus on food. So first of all, Jojolopa. Jojolopa is greetings from my language, from Newa language. This is called greetings or, or good, good, good day, good afternoon, whatever. Uh, anytime you can use Jojo Lapa. And let's talk about Nepal. Nepal is a small country with 150 square kilometer area and 300 million population. So its cultural divers diversification is very high. High, uh, there are 125 ethnic groups and 123 languages. And Newa is one of them with their own script, language, culture, and tradition. And Newa, Newa were concentrated in Kathmandu Valley in ancient time. However, they can be found all over the country at present time. Newas are thought to be originated from Indo-Aryan, that is from India and tibeto burman that is from China and Myanmar. So Newas are majorly Hindu and Buddhist. Today, I'm going to talk about some specific foods, especially I'm going to talk about eight foods from Newa community. So first of all, uh, this is yomari. Yomari is a steamed dumpling made from rice flour, hollow inside, but filled with sesame and jaggery. Yomari means light bread. As the name suggests, everyone likes this, this food. And yomari puni, a full moon day when it, this item is made and eaten. So there are some pictures that is uh, called yomari. The second uh, food is chakamari, a flat thin bread made from rice flour, bake it on an iron pan. And chatamari means flat bread, similar to doza, dosa, but it is made 
with fresh butter. The tamari may be in plain or with topping, as shown in figures below. Sichinaka, a festival when this item is made and eaten. Third is wo. Wo is a thick bread made from white lentil that is called ma or green lentil, mu in our language. So wo may be plain or with toppings, uh, as shown in figure below. Sichinaka, uh, the same same festival when it, this item is eaten. So next is Chwela. Chwela, a meat product made from buffalo meat, grilled over open flame till the outer surface is burned by which the inside is cooked properly. This uh, meat is then mixed with different spices and mustard oil is the must in that uh, food. So Chwela means grilled meat. Haku Chwela means black grilled meal, meat. So in every occasion, this item is must in Newa community. And fifth item is Kachila, a product made from buffalo lean meat, which is finely minced, which is eaten raw. Thus, minced meat is then mixed with different spices and mustard oil is the must. So Kachila means raw meat. This, is, this, this item is eaten raw. The spices used acts as a preservative against food poisoning bacteria. So next is a shapu misa. Shapu misa is a product made from intestinal part of buffalo in which bone marrow is filled into it and then shallow fried. Shapu misa means bag made from intestinal part. And it needs a skill to make this product. So it's not easily available. This product is very rarely available. <laughs> and the seventh one is thon. Thon is a fermented rice wine made from taichini rice. Taichini rice is a kind of rice which has more starch content. Thon is milky white in color and sweet in taste. It is drunk during farm work festivals, women during post delivery, and children as an energy drink and refreshing beverage. And the last one is Ela, a fermented distilled liquor made from grains or jaggery. Ela is watery white in color and pungent in taste. Newa culture. At, at the end, Subha. Subha means thank you from my language. Thank you. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bhima Chitrakar, for this wonderful presentation on a, a Nepalese uh, cuisine uh, tradition or the food uh, tradition in uh, Newa community he was talking about. So thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and we learned a lot from your presentation. Uh, so with that ends our second segment, which was the cultural segment. Here, the participants presented a, different aspects of their cultures. Now we have come to the last part, which is the literature part. This is our last segment. And for this, we have the speaker, uh, Niamul Islam Sabir from ninth semester of the Department of English, Green University of Bangladesh. And he will be talking about Bangladeshi Chakma and Marma literatures and overview. Uh, so Sabir, the floor is yours. All right, thank you so much for giving me the floor. Uh, today, we Bangladeshis mark the 69th year of our language movement. And on this very special occasion, I would like to pay my love and uh, thank to the martyrs who have sacrificed their life for the black language movement. And assalamu alaikum, dear all, and good evening, dear uh, vice chancellors, professors, friends, and all the audience joined today. And it's a great, uh, great uh, privilege for me to be in this wonderful podium today. My special thanks to Ms. Shirazum Munira, ma'am, uh, the director of the uh, language center, who has been scaffolding me on a regular basis as my linguistic teacher. I would like, uh, like to thank also to the Language Club moderator, Ms. Tanzia Mubarak, ma'am, and the club members of the Green University Language Club. So uh, language is what we can call the backbone of a society, whether it's spoken, it's written, language has always uh, has, has an incredible role in building a society. Bloch and Trazer in their book, uh, Outline of Linguistic Analysis, they say, a language is a system of arbitrary vocal symbols by means of which a social group cooperates. So today my topic is Bangladeshi Chakma and Marma Literatures and Overview. And this is Nyamul Islam Sabir, Department of English, the University of Bangladesh. So there is the presentation outline. Uh, first of all, you can see Bangladeshi Chakmas and Overview, then the diversity uh, in the uh, li uh, Chakma literature and uh, Bangladeshi Marmas and Overview, and also the diversity in the literature of uh, Marmas in Bangladesh. So Bangladeshi Chakmas. The Chakma uh, name derived from Sanskrit and Sakti Maha. And Chakma means a powerful and great. 
and uh, this this was coined by one of the Burmese uh, Burmese kings uh, during the uh, during the Bagan era and he actually gave the name Chakma. And Chakma language uh, is an uh, uh, Indo-Aryan language it's spoken by the Chakma people. And there are about three, uh, 320,000 speakers of uh, Chakma language in Bangladesh. And uh, there is the you know territory of the Chakma people you can see in Chittagong, Chittagong Hill tracts they basically live in. And uh, uh, the language has common features with Bangla as well as Chittagonian dialect. So next, diversity um, of Chakma literature. So they are the people of literature. And why is that? Because the Chakmas are quite rich in terms of their literary traditions, and they are the largest of all other tribal communities in Bangladesh. And uh, as, a, as a major prolific community in Bangladesh, Chakmas possesses distinguished culture, literature, festival, and tradition. And it, uh, it is wonderful that, is, uh, that this ethnic group has been so prolific in producing almost every genre of literature such as poetry, epic, play, songs, myths, hymns, and many. But uh, to some, some extent they are un un unfortunate I would say because uh, sometimes they are basically uh, pushed a little bit aside by the power of the community. Uh, they don't really get the limelight they deserve to get. Then uh, you can see Uvagit and this hymn is uh, when they recite because uh, when they think that they have done something wrong in terms of their religion of course, when they think that they have done something wrong, the God is not pleased with them, they recite Uvagit and they think by reciting Uvagit they can calm, calm uh, their God down. So. This is why they uh, basically recite it. Then uh, you see uh, Dagwa Kadha. Uh, it's a collection of proverbs. Um, some um, proverbs and traditional saying is very unique in Chakma language. And uh, this saying mainly centers uh, centered on uh, farming, animal, birds, society, religion, human body as well. Then uh, Chadi Gang Charapala. And this is the oldest puti. Uh, in uh, Chakma literature and also one of the most popular one. And uh, this puti basically tell us that how Chakma or, uh, was or Chakma was originated from Nepal and after uh, roaming around in uh, several Southeast Asian country, they came to Burma and Arkan before settling themselves in the Chittagong field track. Then Chatiga Chara, it's an epic. And it is the most popular, of course, uh, the most popular one uh, among the epics in Chakma literature. And this is uh, this epic is uh, uh, about the Ruang uh, Ruang War. It's a, it's a, uh, it was a battle between the Chakma and another group. The battle is known as Ruang War, and it was during the reign of Sir Matia, uh, the King Sir Matia. And the Chakmas uh, fought this war under General Radha Mohan, and uh, he is someone they consider as a hero. Like uh, Achilles in English literature is a uh, he epic hero, and he is one of those. I mean, he is uh, one of the uh, epic heroes to um, Chakma uh, people, and they uh, admire him a lot. And uh, he his uh, deeds uh, really inspires them. Tanabi, uh, Tanabi is kind of a lullaby song. Right, uh, you know, um, in our country, our uh, mothers uh, sings Gumparani Mashi Pushi for, you know, sleeping the uh, child. And uh, in uh, Chakma language, they sing Tanabi for sleeping their child. And Tanabi is about a beautiful woman. Uh, she is so gorgeous and she is so emotional and sorrowful. And there is a story about Tanabi, uh, whoever reads it will get uh, melted in their heart and uh, it's about uh, a beautiful story of a beautiful woman. Then uh, Radha Mohan and Danpati, it's a play and it is the, uh, you know, uh, the most popular among the romantic plays. Like in Bangladesh, we know Laili Mujnu, in uh, English literature we find uh, Romeo and Juliet. So Radha Mohan and Danpati is uh, the kind of the Romeo and Juliet for the Chakma literature. Then Agartha, well, it's a religious text, and uh, uh, since the Chakma people follows the Buddhist language, I mean Buddhist religion, so uh, they translated it. Uh, the Buddhist religion, uh, re uh, the uh, religious text, they translated translated it uh, in their language, 
and this is what they called agarta and it was actually written on palm leaf talic is uh, is an account of medicinal me medicinal plants basically uh, in talic they have uh, the methods of their own preparation as well as the treatment of different diseases so now i'm moving uh, to the second largest ethnic minority group of Bangladesh and their Marmas. The Marmas are usually known as Mogs or Mugs and uh, there, uh, there are like 201, uh, I mean 200, 210,000 Marma people living here in Bangladesh and it is told that they have been living over here uh, since 1600 uh, so it's been like 400 years and if you see the territory uh, there are Kalrachuri, Kattaimukh, Bandarban, Rangamati, Chitavang, and they're also in Potuakali. Uh, there you see uh, the, the alphabets. Okay, I'm going to come on alphabets after some time. So uh, they have their own uh, script, Marma people, and uh, they speak a language which is uh, almost identical to that of Rakhine and Aing of uh, Kaksis Bazar, Kali Hill districts in Bangladesh. And uh, it is uh, also assumed that uh, the oldest oldest alphabets in the Indian subcontinent is the Marma alphabets. There are uh, 45 alphabets and among them 12 of them are vowels and 33 constants. But uh, they're pretty much unfortunate I would say uh, in terms of I mean despite of having own alphabets nowadays there is a very smaller number of people who can really write in Marma language. There are only few. Okay, and then uh, s uh, soft and poetic. This is basically about the literature. Uh, the thing is, uh, their language uh, might not be understandable to you, but there is uh, a magic in their uh, in their language that would uh, sound so soft and poetic to anyone who hears it. And they love the folk culture a lot. Like they're greatly in love uh, with the music and drama. And also before the advent of cinema and uh, television, they used to spend their nights watching folk dances and operatic performances. So uh, I, I really tried to get some more information while researching about the Marma literature, uh, but unfortunately I could not get much. So this is all I could uh, avail you with. And there are the references um, of my presentation. So if anyone like to visit them, you can. So thank you so much. And I, again, everyone for listening to me and thank you Green University Language Center. Thank you so much, Niamul Islam Sabbi from Green University of Bangladesh. So uh, Niamul was talking about the rich variety of Bangladeshi Chakma and Marma literatures. So we learned a lot about the language, the population, uh, where they live, and uh, he also talked about different varieties. Uh, for example, there is him, uh, epic, uh, and uh, there is also a very famous play in uh, Chakma. So there are a lot of things to research, but he also pointed out at the end that uh, there is a lack of accessible data. Uh, so more research is needed and also we need more translators. So this brings us to the end of our three segments for the virtual symposium organized today. The three segments were language, culture, and literature. And all the presenters have done a wonderful job at presenting their topics. Now we are uh, going to listen to our some of our honorable guests. Uh, we will take their reflections on this session. So at first, I would like to ask Professor Dr. Apurbo Shahasar, uh, coordinator of Center for Endangered Languages, SKB University, India. Sir, uh, could you please say a few words uh, on this occasion? Good evening. Good evening sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Green University of Bangladesh, respected Professor Wajid Kabir, respected Professor Sirazum Munira, respected Professor Tanzia Mubarak, other esteemed professors, dear participants from different universities of different countries, including two of my own students and esteemed online audience. It is undoubtedly a privilege for me to speak a few words today, 21st February, the International Mother Language Day. I pay my deepest tributes to the language martyrs of Bangladesh. It is for this sacrifice that 21st February is observed as the International Mother Language Day. I have no words to thank the authorities of the University of Bangladesh as they have given not only my students, but also me, 
the opportunity to speak today. The way you have started the language week deserves special appreciation from all corners. The way you have encouraged the students from different corners of the world deserves special mention. I will just speak a few words about the speakers on their topics. I am really very much not only surprised but also astonished to listen to the speakers who have spoken on diverse areas and I have learned a lot from you. All these areas have actually given me new thoughts, new food for thoughts, which I will try to incorporate in my future plans of research. I will begin from the end, that is from the, from the speaker who has spoken last, and obviously not the least. <clears throat> it was Mr. Niyamul Islam Sabir from Green University of Bangladesh itself, who has spoken on Chakma and Marma literatures. Mr. Sabir, your paper was a very beautifully presented, very well planned and very well talked out paper. You have given Thank you us so much, sir. in such a short span of time an overview of the two tribal literatures of your country, Chakma and Marma. And to some extent acquainted with Chakma because Chakma is spoken in some parts of India also. And as you have pointed out at the end of your lecture, that uh, obviously not a lot of research work has been done and I think you are still a student of perhaps honors or master degree. So there's ample scope for you to work on this. You can work on, can be on comparative literature, can be on comparative linguistics. Both the options are open to you. And since you have already started working on it, it will be fine if someday I can see you as an expert on this Chakma or Marma. And hopefully I Thank will Thank you so much, you. sir. Keep me in your prayers and I'll try my best. I'll keep uh, your words in my mind. Thank you so much. A lot of scope. So very well presented. Very well presented in such a short span of time. Really, I was astonished and I have kept it in my thoughts also. Thank you for such an enlightening presentation. Thanks for inspiring, sir. Uh, next was Bimal Chitragar. He is from Yangang University, who has spoken on the food culture of Nepalese ethnic communities, uh, Newa and their food habits. And Mr. Chitragar, your presentation was equally good because you have given us a different aspect. In this world, we live in a pluralistic society. Pluralism in all fields, from religion to food, in every sphere there is pluralism. And you have given us the test of that. And and I, I just at the same time include Austin Rhodes also from Shanghai International uh, Students University in China. He has also given us a bite of China. And we all know that both China and Bangladesh, they are famous for their delicacies. And while you have been speaking, I was just wondering and expecting that had it been an offline conference instead of an online one, then we could have got a taste of the delicacies because I'm sure that many of us were salivating. Both of you have presented the diversities of foods and in this world today, today we people, we people take foods of different communities. So food is a medium for union also. And you have also thrown light on new areas which are generally which are generally not spoken. I, I can recollect a seminar which was uh, organized by Vishwa Bharati. Uh, they had also kept a slot for traditional and ethnic foods. And this is now quite getting privileged. So you can also keep on thinking on this line. This is also a good area to work on. Then next we had uh, Kan Wang Lung from Wuhan Textile University of China, who had spoken on Chinese cultural diversity. Mr. Lang and Rhodes, both of them are from China. And for them, just a bit of information, which I'm sure they know, but uh, for all of us, just sharing this bit of information. Chinese Mandarin is the language which is spoken by the most number of people. The highest number of speakers are from Chinese Mandarin. So you belong to that speech community who has the highest number of speakers and Bangla is ranked eighth in the world. So for the number of speakers are concerned, Bangla is eighth. Mr. Lung has spoken on Chinese cultural diversity 
and he too has presented the diversities of culture cultural studies is gaining or rather is just a, a rising even more steep than any other grasp the world is now being ruled by culture studies and language studies so you have enough scope to work on the diversities of culture and you have already began to think in this line so there is enough scope for you too uh, next was uh, shushmita dev from my university and uh, she had spoken on revitalization of endangered languages she is to some extent acquainted with it she has also helped me in some of my projects as a result of which she knows something of the endangered languages and she had presented her paper in a very beautiful manner and endangered languages this is now the talk of the world the whole world is now or the rather linguists of the world are now trying to preserve document and revitalize the endangered languages since i myself is engaged in the work so i have i have really found it very interesting and just a bit of information for for uh, students from other universities like china and uh, nepal they they might be interested to know our center for indigenous languages and uh, the language center of green university of bangladesh we have actually entered into a collaboration to carry out research work on endangered languages and most unfortunately moshi mahati couldn't present her paper because of uh, some technical issues and uh, here also i find that statement which i had read in my ug first year days man proposes god disposes so we we couldn't help it out uh, she was supposed to have spoken on why do languages die why do languages die and that would be followed by shushmita who who had spoken on revitalization because because the languages die we need to revitalize them so all the speakers they had presented very well all the speakers they have actually given us new areas to think we are speaking on this day 21st of february the martyrs day so i pay my deepest tributes to the language martyrs of bangladesh and it is for their sacrifice that 21st february is observed as international mother language day it is your country it is bangladesh who has actually taught the world how to fight for one's own mother tongue we are all proud of our mother tongues and nobody wants that he or her mother tongue would die so on this auspicious day let us also vow as we will not only protect and preserve our own mother tongue but we also take steps so that no language dies as it is also the mother tongue of someone we should think of it that we shouldn't or rather we should try to protect each and every language because each and every language has its own speakers on this day let this be our pledge i once again thank the authorities of green university of bangladesh the authorities of language center and obviously special thanks to professor munira and professor tanzia and hearty congratulations to all the participants thank you thank you all thank you so much professor dr apurva shah for your wonderful meticulous and well thought out feedback to our presenters uh, we learned even more from your feedbacks to be very frank and yes this has been the aim Thank of you. our symposium that is we want to celebrate local languages cultures and literatures through our symposium on this very special day of our international mother language day so uh, Thank you so much Apurva Shah sir once again and now I would like to request our honorable chairperson from the Department of English Green University of Bangladesh uh, Mr AKM Wasit Kabir sir to say a few words on this occasion Thank you Tanjia Mubarak Manisha for welcoming me to uh, have some words on this occasion on our here today's session sip guest one of my mentors and right honorable vice chancellor green university of bangladesh professor dr mohammad gulam samdani fakir special guest of today's webinar professor dr apurva shah chairman department of english 
SKD University, West Bengal, India, with whom I have already been in love with his intellectual height and uh, achievement and attainment. Our honorable international students from India, Nepal, and China, students of Green University of Bangladesh, faculties of the depart of different departments of Green University of Bangladesh, most welcome to this evening arrangement. At the very outset, I bow down my head to pay glowing homage or tribute to those who laid down their lives on this day in 1952 for upholding the honor of their mother tongue. They are the valiant sons of this soil. They are the flesh of flesh, blood of blood, and spirit of spirit of the soil of Bangladesh. I have joined this webinar today, not to talk to, but to listen to, because it is wise to give a year to learn, then to give tongue to talk to. In fine, I am propelled to say that this international webinar is an intellectual radevo or a meeting day to exchange views and ideas on language, culture, and literature with people having divergent nationality and ethnicity. To join this kind of webinar is to become richer intellectually. The presentation of the students are really thought-provoking and heart-revishing. I am grateful to the presentations of the students. I am also very much grateful and thankful to the uh, commentary provided by Professor Dr. Apurbo Shah on the presentation of the students. Paul, I like to conclude and I like to say that uh, this webinar was really thought provoking and heart revishing. I am really indebted and grateful to the organizers of this, of this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh AKM Wazit Kobisar from the Department of English, Green University of Bangladesh, for your inspiring speech. Uh, now it's time to listen to the guardian of our university, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Green University, Professor Dr. Mohammad Ghulam Sandani Fakir, sir. I would like to request you to say a few words. Uh, to our audience on this occasion, sir. Thank you very much, Sanjay. It is really a wonderful opportunity. You see, you notice that at the very outset, I said I would like to learn. So yes, that's sir. why at the very outset, I was planning that I must listen because uh, this the wonderful arrangement that you made uh, from their presentation, I can really learn. And in fact, it was, it happened that I learned many things from the presentations. So at the very outset, before I say something, I would like to express my gratitude and and homage to the martyr, those who lost uh, their lives, they give up their lives in, for establishing the mother language in 1952. And for which we got this international mother language in 1999. So we are really grateful to them for their sacrifice for the language. Uh, in my speech, I would like to uh, cover two, three aspects. At the very outset, I would like to mention that uh, you have really uh, done a great job organizing this uh, kind of symposia in which uh, participants from different countries, they joined and they made their wonderful presentations. And at the very outset, I would like to say that our professor, Apur Bursaha, who came from our university, Askide, uh, thank you very much for joining with us. It was a wonderful uh, opportunity for us to listening from you. Uh, I you. really enjoyed, uh, sir, the way that you summarized the presentation that made by different presenters. And you also uh, put your personal reflection on when you are summarizing this. That really helped us to really get new insight from your summarization. And I would like to also give thanks to the, all the presenters. And um, when I was listening from China, particularly Ken Wen Long, and Austin Roads. It reminds me that most probably they might might not know that I visited three times in uh, Wuhan Textile University, and I remember the kind of hospitality that I received from them. So uh, I believe that uh, the kind of when they're talking about their food in China, it was really gave me immense pleasure because I was exposed in different kind of foods in China. And when I was listening from uh, Sushmita, 
particularly from India, as Kede, and I regarding revitalizing the language, it reminds me a lot of things that has been going in Bangladesh and also in India. We are really sorry that we are really sorry that we missed us. One thing that I would like to add when uh, Shushmita was mentioning revitalizing, you know, this reminds me the kind of statistic that we know that 43% of the estimated 6,000 languages presently spoken in the world are in, an, in danger. So 43% estimated 6,000 um, languages that are being spoken. And very sad that only few hundred languages are in, used in, in, in education system. And less than 100 are used in digital world. So these things are going on, you know, now how we can really uh, improve the situation, that is a really big challenge. And I realized uh, when Sushmita was talking about revitalizing, she was really touching some of us suspect. And when I was listening from Oporbo Shaka, it gave me the impression that uh, Eskide uh, from the, the from their center, they are also doing a lot of work to saving the, some of the endangered languages from there. Now, the question comes, why really need to work for the languages that are losing their images. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, the multilingualism and uh, uh, if you really like to develop the sustainable level goals that will develop and the concept that we said leaving no one behind, all these aspects really encourage us that we need to really create an inclusive society throughout the world and for different reasons. And for creating this inclusive society, the language definitely met. So these are the aspects that uh, your symposium has really highlighted many of the issues here. And when I was listening from Bimal, it was really uh, encouraging for me. Bimal, you have really done a great job. I really appreciate it and I hope that you'll come out with wonderful uh, publications through your uh, paper. And uh, many of us are not quite familiar about this uh, Jack Myanmar uh, language situations, but your paper has really highlighted those aspects. Now, when I was listening regarding uh, the combination of culture, uh, language, and literal symposium, it reminds me when I was in USA and when I was in Romania. Uh, let me give one example when I was in USA. Uh, the university in which I was teaching, uh, the students came from 65 countries of the world. So they, they created multi language situation over there, multicultural dimension over there. Uh, in their inauguration session, all the languages, the greetings part, they basically try to show to us. In the, in, in, you know, in this inauguration session, all the languages from different countries, what they're coming, the greetings displayed. And it was a fascinating part. Number two, uh, around the year, we used to have, you know, food symposium in which uh, the people coming from different countries, they used to prepare their own. And I remember that uh, for my students, in my uh, uh, class, the students came from 35 countries. So they used to, uh, every country they used to offer different kinds of foods in one particular day. And one particular event that was happened with me, our students, they mobilized fund and asked me that we'd like to enjoy Bangladeshi food. So I prepared Bangladeshi food for all of my students in my class. There are around 30 students in my in, in my class and they enjoyed it so much. So what I'm, I'm mentioning these things, this, uh, this the food culture, the which is part of this uh, cultural dimension that really uh, paid a certain kind of bondage to really understand different kinds of culture through this. So through the presentation of uh, Today, uh, we also realized that uh, when we are listening, the food uh, habit that coming from the Nepal, he was also making wonderful demonstration through his presentations. Uh, we really enjoyed it. And that gave me the impression that, well, in terms of making it more language, culture, and literal segments in Brazil, uh, most probably it could have been better if we could really add some music and song also in terms of language. Sure, that sir. That could have added more uh, uh, diversity in this uh, symposium. I'm sure that most probably next time we'll think on it to bring yes. some music and song in this prospect. At the end, I would like to say that uh, thank you very much for joining in this wonderful symposium. My friends coming from different countries, uh, you are really welcome. And we really appreciate your time and passions for joining with us in this great event. 
And I really uh, appreciate the initiative taken by our language center, Siraju Manira and Tanjia. You are, you are really, both of you have done a wonderful job. And I'm sure our chairperson of the English uh, the department, Ken uh, Ajit Kobe, was behind all of you. And he was giving all kinds of support. And our uh, partner, uh, Professor Apurbo Shaha from SKD, you also deserve a special appreciation from our side for really making it happen. And I'm looking forward to have much more collaboration with SKD in coming days. Thank you once again for giving me the opportunity. Uh, that is the reason that I did not really give my speech at the very beginning because, because I was uh, trying to listen from the presenters and getting some new uh, ideas from the presentation. It's a wonderful way of really uh, conducting this university. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for such an excellent and thought-provoking feedback, sir. In fact, the theme or the aims of our symposium has been uh, narrated by Vice Chancellor Sir himself, and we are truly honored to have Sir with us despite his extremely busy schedule today. So thank you so much, Sir, for staying with us this whole session and for uh, giving your wonderful reflection. Uh, now I would uh, like to go for uh, the vote of thanks. For this, I would like to invite Mr. Russell Kabir, Assistant Professor, uh, Department of English and Language Center, Green University of Bangladesh, to offer the vote of thanks. Russell Kabir, sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Green University of Bangladesh, Professor Dr. Mohammad Bulam Sandhari Fakir, respected guest uh, Dr. Apurva Shaha from SKB University, India, and Dr. Mandana Kola Those, if I mispronounce the name, excuse me for that, sir, from Islamic Azad University of Tabriz, Iran. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, Mr. K. M. Ozid Kabir, uh, Department of English, University of Bangladesh. Uh, most valued invited guests coming from China, India, Nepal, and Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. Assalamu alaikum. So it's an absolute honor for me to convey a vote of thanks on this great occasion. I, on behalf of the Green University of Language Center, would like to take the opportunity to extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the speakers. At this stage, I must mention the names of the invited speakers of today's event. So today we had among us Mr. Bimal Choitrakar from Nepal, Ms. Sushmita De from India. We had also from uh, from India another speaker, Moshumi Mohanty from India. Again, we had uh, another speaker from China, Mr. Austin Rhodes. And I cannot remember the full name of another speaker, Mr. Kang. I can remember the first name, so please excuse me for that. We are really grateful to all the speakers for your wonderful demonstration for with which you have graced this symposium with your valuable words describing your mother languages, your cultures, customs and traditions, and many more. So with your words, with your uh, demonstration, I believe that audience have been greatly benefited, which will help them think globally in a bigger dimension. At this stage, I must mention the names of our team who, along with their wholehearted support, made this event. The team includes Siraju Munira, the Director of Language Center, also Assistant Professor, Department of English. And after that, there is Mr. Abdullah al -Masoum. I must thank him for his wholehearted support. Uh, he is an Assistant Professor in the Department of English. And followed by him, uh, we have some other uh, faculty members uh, supporting us together. Ms. Tanzia Mubaro, Ms. Sumaya Afrin, Mr. Mamun Rashid Jaber, Mr. Injita Mam, and Mr. Rabbi Islam Rasel. So thank you all. I cannot thank you enough for your involvement and your willingness to take on completion of tasks beyond your comfort zones. So with this, I thank all the audience, all the respected guests, uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, and all the guests coming from uh, different countries. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Russell Kubir, sir, for your wonderful vote of thanks. So thank you so much, uh, the wonderful team here at Green University and all the excellent presenters from different countries who have given us so much time and presented uh, wonderfully in this session. So with everyone's permission, I would like to end today's uh, session here. Okay, thank you so much. So stay safe and take care, everyone. Take care.